A couple years ago, I had a novel idea. What if I create a LinkedIn account that only posts AI-generated content? That's right, I was doing AI slop before it was cool. <laughs> now, this was back in the olden days where image models were doing like eight, nine fingers a hand. And if you asked ChatGPT anything about math, the whole computer would explode. So I was working with sticks and stones over here, but I used ChatGPT to generate the posts. I used Dolly to generate the images. I even used this AI app to AI generate myself into a man. And at the time, I didn't really even think about any moral or ethical implications. Like I had some hazy idea in the back of my head that this was maybe bad for the environment, but I still kind of thought AI was sort of a trend or a gimmick. I didn't think it would be like society upending or anything. <laughs> and plus the specific things that I was posting were so ridiculous. I felt like nobody would actually believe them. And then I started getting recruiter DMs. Now, I do not know what it was about the ridiculous AI post that I was making that resulted in getting an aggressive number of inbounds from meta recruiters. But I will say on my real LinkedIn, I have a pretty good resume. I'm a senior engineer at a fan company. That's pretty good, right? Wrong. I was never receiving the number of messages as when I was Burt Burkle with a profile picture that said open to wife. Anyway, at that point, I did start to feel a little guilty. I didn't want to waste anybody's time. So I ended up deleting the account, even though I kind of felt like in the back of my head, the recruiter should be able to tell that something was a little bit off. And after that experience, when I would see more advanced iterations of AI slop, I would kind of feel the same way. Like, okay, this is kind of bad, but at least you can tell, right? And then VO3 came out. And then those prompt theory videos came out. You heard about the prompt theory going viral on TikTok? Prompt theory? No, what's that? The theory claims we're all just AI. AI? No, I'm a Taurus. So. And two things started to happen. One, I kind of stopped being able to tell. And two, I kind of liked some of the AI generated content. And before you cancel me for liking AI slop videos, I am not talking about those weird animal dancing videos. I am talking about the cloud cutting videos, the impossible keyboard videos, the glass fruit videos. Unfortunately, those AI ASMR videos just hit. But the result of all of this is that I can't in good conscience dismiss a lot of these AI use cases anymore. I can't say all AI content is soulless slop anymore because sometimes it's kind of good. And I can't say that all AI coding tools are bad because they're not anymore. So now more than ever, I feel like I have to grapple with the ethical implications of this. There's this tool upending our world, taking our jobs, and worst of all, putting itself on our TikTok feeds. And I'm not the only one who thinks this. The comment section of the AI glass fruit cutting videos has become a full blown war. Some people are saying this is the perfect use for AI, while some are saying consuming any AI content like this is unethical. So let's dig into this. I wanna start by actually looking at individual AI use cases and deciding if each of them is more on the benign side or something worthy of feeling guilty over. So I'm gonna create a classic YouTube tier list here. And the top, the S tier is gonna be the most evil, the things that that you should feel the most guilty about if you're doing. Um, and the bottom is gonna be mostly benign, probably fine. So let's start with what we've already been talking about. The AI ASMR videos, the glass fruit cutting videos, the impossible keyboard videos. And I'm also gonna lump this in with like the dogs working at McDonald's videos, if you've seen those. Basically anything fantastical that a human couldn't actually film and create without CGI. I'm gonna go D tier for this one because this is actually a novel thing we're getting from AI. Like I said, humans can't actually produce this. I'm sure there is a way to do this with CGI, but it would require a ton of man hours. And yes, I do know that there's a subgenre of people where they are actually trying to recreate some of these fantastical AI videos. Um, this is a recreation of the cloud cutting video, for example. However, it's not the same thing. This is also like not misleading anybody. I don't think anybody thinks these are real. And if they do, like, so what? That won't really affect anything tangible in your life. But of course, there's still the negatives of the job loss, in this case of the ASMR artists and the environmental impact. So it's still D tier, it's not off the board entirely. Next, let's talk about a different type of content that I'm also seeing a lot on social media, which is AI influencers. So this is an example of one account where they're using AI generated images and videos to look like a real person. And I am not gonna lie, this one scares the shit out of me. When people said AI was gonna take our jobs, I was like, well, if I lose my programming job, maybe I'll just do content. Like AI can never take that job. Why is that job being taken first now? In the Reddit comments on this one, someone was saying they were happy about this because they want influencers to make less money. Respectfully, what have I done to you? And this is just a little bit of a tangent, but I know if I asked that dude, he'd be like, oh, you're not who I'm talking about. But it's kind of the same thing. If AI can replace hot girls on Instagram, they can also replace kind of funny girls who make coding content on Instagram. So yes, I am very biased here, but I think part of the reason that this one really bothers me is A, I don't really think that most of this account's followers necessarily know the account is AI. And B, 
Assuming the person that runs the account wants to cash in on this and start selling diet pills or something, there's no accountability there. Like, obviously the AI girl that's selling the diet pills won't have tried them, but also the creator of the account can sort of sell whatever they want and just have no consequences. Because what is the worst thing that would happen if they sold something that was dangerous or harmful? We don't even know who runs the account. The worst case for them is just having to create a new AI girl. But all of those fans will think this is a real person endorsing whatever they're selling. So I'm gonna rank this B tier. I, I think this is pretty bad. If you are making AI influencer content, yeah, I'm sorry. I do think you should feel a little guilty. Next one, also very related, is AI viral marketing content. So this is the same concept as the AI influencer account, but instead of selling you diet pills being some hazy possibility that might be bad, its goal is literally to sell you diet pills. So here's an example. In 2019, I auditioned for Love Island and the emotional damage it caused me took years to undo. These are the four sickening things the producers made us do to look skinnier on camera. This girl is saying that she was casted for Love Island and that these were all the crazy products the producers made her use to look skinnier. And she just happened to helpfully link them all in her bio. But of course that girl is actually this girl. I was 17 in 2019. I did not audition for Love Island. That is a scary leap good AI of me. This story is being posted in like very, very slight variations on hundreds of different accounts. I saw one where she said she applied in 2019, in 2021, in 2022. I'm like, at this point, girl, you're not getting onto Love Island. So I would rank this A tier, like you're literally lying. I would say this is even false advertising, but of course, who are you gonna sue? We have no idea who runs these accounts. So now leaving the social media realm, I wanna talk about AI art and specifically the Studio Ghibli trend. So if you haven't seen it, people were taking personal photos and making them into the the style of Studio Ghibli. And the reason that I wanna talk about this trend specifically instead of AI art in general, is that my very, very, very hot take on AI art is that AI art itself does not inherently steal from artists. The reason I think that is because AI art models, mostly diffusion models, the way that they learn is that they're, they're learning various shapes and colors and textures. And then they're learning about how they can put all these things together to make, let's say, a dog. For the most part, these models are not simply copy pasting other artists work. However, I think the issue does start to come in when the model learns not what a dog means or what Fluffy means, but what Studio Ghibli style means. Because yes, at that point, that is basically copying. So to me, the issue of AI art in general is B tier, mostly because of the general sense of like job loss, which I don't wanna downplay at all and we'll talk a lot more about later, but Studio Ghibli style AI art or AI art in the style of blank, that does, in my opinion, move up to A tier because that, that really is copying the artist. The style is something that the artist did invent, at least enough for the model to have recognized it, to have seen enough patterns of it, that it is able to reproduce it. The next use case is AI generated scams. Now, like a lot of you, I get those text messages that say I have an unpaid toll on my car. I don't have a car. In fact, I failed my driver's test three times in a row. So I like really don't have a car. And thankfully that makes these texts pretty easy to spot as scams. But now with AI tools, these scams are getting a lot better. They're able to combine a ton of personal information about you and make these hyper personalized emails or texts that really sound like they're coming from someone you know and trust. There was even a case last year where a man was tricked into paying out $25 million after having a video call that he thought was with his colleagues and executives at his company, but turned out to be deep fakes. So I would rank this S tier in terms of evilness. Like it's just straight up scamming people. Hopefully that's self-explanatory. And this actually brings us to the sponsor of this video, Incogni. Incogni can stop scammers from getting your information in the first place by contacting the data brokers who are selling your information. They can make hundreds of takedown requests on your behalf and continuously monitor to make sure your data stays off the market. I actually tried to do this process on my own a couple years ago when I first started gaining a platform online because I didn't want random strangers in the comment section to be able to look up my home address on these people search sites. I was basically just going down this huge list of data brokers and emailing them or calling them on the phone one by one. But of course I wasn't able to hit every single one of them and over time new data brokers popped up that also had my information. And when I signed up for Incogni, they found 355 data brokers that still have my information. That is a lot of phone calls. Protect your personal data today and use my code AlbertaTech to get 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Next up, we're gonna do a speed round of the last few. First up is using ChatGPT on a random Tuesday. I'm gonna say this is E tier. Like yes, every interaction with AI does harm the environment in a small way. Text generation though is the least harmful. Next up is chatbots on random websites, like chatbots on an H&M website. I'm gonna say D tier. I used to think like they were ruining the internet. However, once they started being able to do things, you know, like agentic abilities, 
they started being a little helpful. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go D tier. Disinformation, like lies about political candidates or world events. Obviously this has to go in S tier. Um, disinformation is bad. However, sometimes disinformation, kind of fun, kind of cool. So just something to think about. Still an S tier though. Now that we've talked about some specific AI use cases, I wanna talk about some general things that might make you feel guilty about typing that prompt in no matter what it is you're using AI for. Now, I think the thing that's top of mind for most people is obviously in the environment. And I think at this point, most of us do know that generative AI takes up a lot of electricity, a lot of infrastructure in terms of data centers. But what is not clear is how much electricity does it take? And that nobody freaking knows. I feel like every day in the news, there's a new number being reported that is so wildly different than the one before it. They're both kind of unbelievable. I've seen articles that say AI is taking up the same amount of energy as the country of Japan. But recently Sam Altman said one chat GPT query takes only one fifteenth of a teaspoon of water and the same energy as leaving a high efficiency light bulb on for only a few minutes, which, okay, that doesn't sound so bad. And I want to be clear here. I don't know the answer because we don't know the answer. We are at the mercy of AI companies to tell us this information. And obviously they have an incentive to keep that number very low when they give it out publicly, if they're giving it out at all, which most of them really aren't. Like for example, in the figures that Sam Altman gave, he is just telling you the amount of energy that is taken to query ChatGPT, or the technical word for that is inference. But he is not telling you how much energy it took to train the model that you were querying. And that is a really energy intensive process that he's kind of hiding behind the curtain. So yes, from my perspective, there is some valid guilt associated with this, even if we don't know the exact numbers. However, there are some signs that AI's energy footprint, whatever it is, might come down. Companies are generally aligning on using these smaller models for inference. These are the models that are cheaper to run and in theory should take up a lot less electricity. Companies don't wanna be paying the cost for hosting or calling these super expensive AI models in the first place. So I do think that is reason to at least hope that the AI energy crisis isn't gonna balloon out of control like a lot of people are predicting it will. On the other hand, there's this argument that I totally do not agree with that AI might just like invent something up to solve climate change. So it all kind of like evens out. And Sam Altman has been a big proponent of this idea. The MIT Technology Review had this great opinion piece where they said, you need to develop a tool that does more than plagiarize journalism and help students cheat on homework before you can credibly assert that it will solve humanity's thorniest problems. No crumbs, no crumbs, no crumbs. I feel like this is the equivalent of saying, we don't need to worry about the bills. What if I win the lottery tomorrow? It's like, <laughs> what if? And to be clear, I don't think it's totally unreasonable of an idea. Like AI could solve climate change, but it's just kind of an idea. We don't have any proof it's gonna happen. Whereas we do have a lot of proof that climate change is happening right now and AI and the energy usage there is contributing to it. The last major thing I wanna talk about here is AI taking people's jobs. I think in terms of pure guilt, this is the one that hits me the hardest. Not that the environment is less important than people's jobs. This kind of reminds me of the community clip where Britta is like, I can excuse racism, but I draw the line at animal cruelty. You can excuse racism. Like they're both bad, but personally, it just makes me feel a lot worse than Side to know that somebody's job is being taken by AI. So I'll give you an example. A lot of you guys know I make merch. I think it automatically shows up below the video. But back when I was still sort of exploring the process, I generated some designs using AI and made some samples with them. And at first I really didn't feel any type of way about it, but I started talking to some friends and they brought up the point that I was taking a job away from a designer. And in my head, I'm not gonna lie, I was like, how could I be taking away a job from a designer? I never hired a designer. I've never in my life hired a designer. But I do think as I had more conversations about this, as I thought more about this, I realized that if everybody has this thought process, we are going to end up in a world where there are no artists, no designers, no one to do this work. Because yes, even if I have never hired an artist before, not hiring one for this project when I otherwise would have had to is taking a job away from a freelance graphic designer in this case. And even though the sad truth of this is no matter what I do, there is going to be a lot less demand for artists in the coming years. It didn't sit right with me to be personally involved in that. So now I do work with a pixel artist who makes about half of my designs. The other half, if they're simple enough, I'll just make myself. So should you use AI? Should you feel guilty about it? I think in this video, we've covered that there's a lot of different harms that come from AI. Some of them apply to all uses of AI, like job loss or environmental impact. And some of them are really specific depending on what you're using AI for. But at the same time, AI does open up a lot of new opportunities and make many of us more efficient in our work. And in the past year or so, it's also started to feel like using AI is not really optional. There was a memo from Microsoft to its employees earlier this year that basically said just that, using AI is no longer optional. And even if you're not receiving a direct memo telling you that, you might already feel like you need to use AI or you're gonna fall behind or you're not gonna be able to compete with peers who are vibe coding or using generative media to do their job. And of course, people are using AI for like positive impactful outcomes. Like 
AlphaFold out of DeepMind. They're enabling a lot of scientific breakthroughs right now in biology. So I'm not gonna tell you to stop using AI altogether. Personally, in my life, I do use AI every day and I'm going to continue using AI where it makes sense. But I do hope you will keep in mind that that guilt you may or may not feel generating your sixth AI influencer post of the day or whatever else you might be doing with it, sometimes that might be something you should be listening to. If you like this content, please follow along. For now, take care.